Hello friends, welcome back. Spark Streaming and Kafka Streams. Before comparing both of these streaming frameworks, let's talk about why we need to do stream processing. The demand for stream processing is increasing every day. The reason is increasing of volume of data, big volume of data. Just processing big volumes of data is not enough. The data needs to be processed quickly so that organizations can react to changing business conditions in real time. Stream processing is the real time processing of data continuously and concurrently. Stream processing is the ideal platform to process data streams or event data, whereas complex event processing utilizes event by event processing and aggregation. For example, on potentially high ratio of event throughput versus number of queries. There might be out of order of events from variety of sources, often with large number of business rules and business logic. We have many options to deal with real-time processing of big data. The tools like Spark Streaming, Kafka Streams, Flink and Storm and there are more. But we limit our scope comparing Spark Streaming and Kafka Streaming framework in this video. As I said earlier, just processing of big data is not enough. There are a lot of things needs to be considered while processing the streaming of data. Those characteristics are low latency, volume of data, data processing, and integration. First, <clears throat> low latency. How low latency your business is expecting to process the data? How much low latency is acceptable for your business? How fast the process data is needed for your business to take critical business decisions? Real-time data like uh, flight tracking data, e-commerce applications. These applications are needed real-time processed data as soon as the raw data is arrived in your streaming application. Flight tracking apps need to provide the status of flight about its takeoff time, the height or altitude info where the flight is flying. This is very critical info for radar application to know the flight status in real time. E-commerce applications to suggest the better products for customers while he is browsing the other products on website. If you don't provide expected product info, he may leave the website which causes business loss. And also trading platforms which requires the real-time share values of each company listed on the stock exchange. This kind of applications needed process the data as soon as the raw data is arrived. Machine learning applications or analytic applications can expect data in one second or to some minutes. Of course, it depends on use case. Mostly analytics application does not need real-time data, batch data is enough for them. So which will be used to analyze the data and to take some business decisions which, which is not needed to take immediately. Some, some machine learning applications require near real-time data to train the machine learning model as soon as possible and to deploy it in production. Volume of data. There are some devices which generate data in big volumes each and every second, which is in petabytes. There will be million records per second. Like IoT devices embedded on vehicles, satellites, and so on some GPS devices generate huge amounts of data per second. This data will be used to track the location of vehicle or satellite uh, sometimes to know the speed of the vehicle where it is moving 
and sometimes weather information of the location where the vehicle is moving. Data processing. So what kind of data you want to process? Is a SQL query data like uh, querying data from uh, some databases and you are executing SQL queries such kind of data or analytics data. So analytics data in the sense maybe you are extracting data from some database and transforming it and loading it again into another database. So this kind of data usually used for analytics application. So the data for analytic applications ETL yeah what, that's what I said. Data for machine learning models. The data for machine learning models which is initially in a raw format. So you need to process the data in different format that can be understandable by the machine learning model. So you have to prepare the data from raw data. So such kind of data it will be huge sometimes it might be small. So such kind of data which is required for machine learning models and bulk data processing. Yeah. It's a kind of a petabytes of data processing that should be uh, the, uh, the framework or streaming framework which you want to use that should be capable to handle the bulk amount of data. So it, that can easily process the bulk amount of data and it can handle and you can uh, do the computing on distributed way such kind of things. So the data is bulk you should consider which kind of a streaming framework you, you have to use. Individual event processing, yeah, well, the data or event that is processed individually, not along with all other events, but you want to process the data event by event, that means minute by minute, second by second, every millisecond. So if you want to process the data in such a way, that means the data which is received by your streaming application may not be in order. So you want to process the data in a chronological order. So which kind of framework suits such kind of streaming processing handling? Integration. So if you are choosing some streaming framework, you should think about how you can integrate this streaming application with other application. Such kind, you know, if you want to uh, process the data uh, which is received from another Kafka topic and you are process the data and you are writing to another Kafka topic. So whether your streaming framework is capable to do that. Maybe you don't want to have a, a heavy weight processing streaming framework. You may want very small streaming framework which you can easily embed in another application and easily you can process the data. And you maybe you don't want to uh, process the data in a distributed way. Sometimes you may need to process the data in a distributed way because it's a huge amount of data and you want to compute it and you want to compute it in a faster way but all the streaming frameworks cannot do that which has a distributed way of computing feature those streaming frameworks can do that job. So you want to process your data in a distributed way and if you want to integrate the your streaming framework with other applications. So you have to think all these things. So what to choose? Quark streaming or Kafka streams? Whatever the characteristics that I have defined, think about that. So as we discussed, these four characteristics are very important while choosing the streaming framework. So what to choose, Spark Streaming or Kafka Streams? Before choosing, let's get into the features of each and every framework that is defined here. First, Apache Spark. Apache Spark is a distributed and in-memory stream processing engine. It means it can receive the data from source system and it can process the data in memory in a distributed format. This drastically increase the the computing speed and power of any data processing application. The second is machine learning and graph processing. The Spark is having a machine learning framework also inside. 
in one bu one bundle and also graph processing of data that means machine learning libraries can use for to build the machine learning model after receiving and it can uh, compute as per the machine learning model whatever the algorithm defined in the machine learning model data can be ingested from kafka kinesis flume all these source systems that means easily we can ingest the data from kafka kafka is a distributed uh, uh, distributed streaming platform where it can have where it has uh, kafka topics packing things <coughs> machine learning libraries apache spark bundle comes with machine learning libraries as well so which can be used to build machine learning model the third data can be ingested from kafka kinesis flow and other source systems so if you are using spark framework you can ingest the data from kafka kinesis of aws kinesis like flume all these source systems can ingest the data easily into spark streaming framework data can be processed using complex algorithms apache spark itself has machine learning libraries so obviously it will have the algorithms to process the data to apply some algorithm and to get the prediction results based on some patterns in the data so all those functions are available in the spark streaming framework high level functions like map reduce join window and watermarking so when you want to transform the data there are a lot of functions available in the streaming framework of kafka apache spark like map reduce join so using these functions you can easily transform the data the way you want next kafka streams so if you want to process the data event by event it means you want to process the events in a chronological order with millisecond maybe if you if you are want to process data with latency as a big thing so you can use the kafka streams for this stateful processing including distributed joins and aggregations so you can process the data by storing the state of the each and every event inside kafka streams it has the state store functionality where you can store the state of each and every event a convenient dsl dsl in a sense domain specific language so kafka streams application can be implemented using java or scala so that is very popular languages so easily you can uh, process the data in kafka streams if you are familiar with uh, java or scala programming language and also it provides a windowing with out of order data using data flow like mono so it provides the windowing functionality as well because if you want to process the data in event by event and you can define some windows since so, uh, uh, this means uh, if you want to process the data in this particular window maybe from 7 o'clock to until 10 o'clock you want to process the only the data that is between these two timings so you can be knowing that and you can process that particular window distributed process and fault tolerant with fast failover no downtime throwing deployments so you can process data in a distributed format without any fault and failover so when you want to deploy your application in the new version of kafka streaming application you don't need to shut down your application and easily you can deploy the application into different environments conclusion so when it comes their features both are best of breeds in their specific features so so both are best in their specific features so so it depends on your use case you can choose which framework kafka streams or spark streaming go with kafka stream if you want to low latency and easy to use every even time support it means low latency is very important for your application and you want to process the data even by event go with kafka streams since it is a lightweight library and can be used in 
any Java or Scala application. So it's just a very lightweight library. That means you can embed this Kafka streaming application inside any other Java or Scala application, and you can process the data without any cluster. You don't need to have any cluster for Kafka streams. And another use case is if you are right, if you are receiving the data from one Kafka topic and transforming it and writing it to another Kafka topic, another Kafka topic. In that case, Kafka streams is the best choice. Go with Spark streaming. If you are receiving the data from different source systems like uh, uh, maybe from Kafka or maybe you are receiving data from some APIs and some other databases and in that case, Spark streaming is the best solution. Event time is not relevant and low latencies are accept acceptable. So, you don't want to process event by event. You can process the data at any time like uh, mm, no need to consider the event time and you can process the data. So in that case, you can go with the uh, Spark streaming and low latency is not important, then go with Spark streaming. And also, if you want to process the data in a distributed way and the data is very bulk, so go with Spark streaming. So Spark streaming having lot of features each which can handle a huge amount of data processing and it is stable and easy to integrate with other systems because if you want to if you want to write the data to some other machine learning model database uh, spark streaming the best choice because it has a lot of features you can uh, uh, write the data into different uh, Databases like Elasticsearch, Cassandra, MongoDB, or Neo4j. So it has a lot of uh, connecting, <coughs> connect, uh, connection drivers, or maybe features to connect to different databases and different systems. So in that case, go with Spark Streaming. Thanks, guys. That's all. So based on uh, your use case, you can go with Spark or Kafka Streams. So please let me know which kind of application you are using and if you have any question please put them in comment section i'll get back to you thank you bye bye